Okay, I'm in conversation with Sylvain around an enhancement for NetSuite Advanced Projects, or SRP, how it's sometimes called. About a year ago, we did some enhancements to what's called the task assigning area. We're looking at it on screen right now, and our client wanted to take this further. What the client asked to do, uh, Sylvain, was a couple things. One, they wanted to add notes in this area, correct? Correct. So on a, on a single row to have an extra field, a text area field to store some notes yep. to have that persist. And then there was something else you said you wanted to do around some calculations around these hours. Is that correct? Yeah. There's, so they wanted the ability to select a number of the tasks and to um, get the app or get the suite to automatically reconcile the remaining hours to zero. So in this case, it would decrease the adjusted budget hours by two and save and to get that to happen for all the rows that had remaining hours. Right. And then in this implementation here, it's using NetSuite's native assignment list behind the scenes for which is really not a extensible area. So you really can't add notes. You can't extend that table, correct? But this implementation that you're showing here, That's which true. was a year ago, continued to use NetSuite's native kind of capacity, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and it tried to create a better user interface around it. In addition, mm -hmm. did not the client say we also, because if you look, there's a long list here, needed to have more capacities for bulk. Is that correct? Yeah. So they wanted not only bulk, but also the ability to sort of filter down the list and to see more carefully and to see things more carefully, but also to pick a resource and to apply it in bulk to selected resources, to selected yeah. tasks. Got it. So because they had this idea of generic resources, so that at the beginning of the project, they would apply it to generic resources. Maybe they wanted to apply many resources to many tasks at once. It's, makes yeah. sense. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Now, then a year had passed and the work that we were doing behind the scenes, we created the the extensible client framework that allows us to more rapidly create high-performance client-side applications on the NetSuite platform, correct? Mm -hmm. and, we, correct. And, we, and you applied that pattern to work that we're doing. So, so this is the old app. Let's now mm -hmm. go to the new app, take a look at the new app here. All right, so we have the same data. There's a little bit of difference in the UI in the top, and there's a few extra things. Let's first talk about the notes, because I think that was the first one that they talked about that they wanted to do. So, so where's so on that? One of these, on one of these fields, you have an input here, mm -hmm. and uh, you can create that as a, as a record. Mm -hmm. This is supported by a, a custom table, a custom record table in NetSuite, in which we store sort of a link to the resource and the task and the project, so we know where we are, mm -hmm. and it set up so that any changes that we that we make won't just override the version record but it'll it'll create a new one in, in the sense that we keep track and we keep a history of all the changes that you make so there is so, so we can, as we make changes to the notes there is a historical element going on right and we can have any num any number of fields of whatever we want on there so that we can for instance take take record of uh of the cost of uh, of, of a resource or the price of a resource over time so, so part of the pattern uh, the, that we have here is as data is changing, we can get a historical reference similar to the way NetSuite has its own mechanism for system notes, but we're in complete control over that. Is that what you're showing here? Yeah, total, total control. So the name of the record here, this is the custom record that's supporting it, is, is what's giving me the timestamp. And there's the link to the resource and uh, the project, and then the two notes that I made, hello and hello world. Got and it. So, so, any, so any field we care about, we have the ability to say if we want this versioning or this this history of it, we can we yeah. effectively have that. Yeah, there was a, there was a problem here with if uh, we can't do it with this one because it has, uh, it has, it's been space. Line, but if we take one of these resources here, this task, we can still change the resource because it, ha it hasn't been baseline. So let's testing resource change. Let's create that one. Let's go see if that's there. Okay, so 166672. And if we change this uh, this this resource, that 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 line and that sublist and that native sublist that internal ID is going to change. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that these notes stick with it in mm -hmm. a sense. And so they, Janelle Howell got these notes 
reassign to that to this instead of one six 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 seven two now it's whatever that was. okay got it so, so there's a fair amount of intelligence behind the scenes to keep this keep this thing in sync due to the way netsuite's tracking internal ids around its own native sublist yeah okay cool remove you can add if i click new at the bottom instead of having to scroll down manually i can just click new okay and it'll scroll down for me and add, give me the option to add things in there okay and what was that thing they were doing around the budgeted hours? What was new? What was the difference in the calculation on that one? Right. So the idea is if I take, say, if I take these three here, right, the, the checking checkbox is, is like you would expect. If you take these three here, they have some remaining hours. Yeah, they do. If I were to click this button, we'll see these three are going to get affected. And then everything's going to get... Mm, Reconciled, except that didn't actually affect the change. Well, this was a final thing, I guess. And then, yeah, the idea is for that to work. I okay. That, that was working. Yeah. I the, the the goal is for remaining hours to be zero. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. Yeah, I think I'm just doing an arithmetic problem. Okay, so that's one thing. I just need to fix that error. So so yeah, so the sorting and the filtering. This is all from the framework. I didn't have to sort of script any of this stuff. They don't have any summary tasks on this project task. Okay, and then bulk assigned resources is also a little bit smart because suppose I were to take two of the same task and I say, I wanna apply both of these to this person. Well, that's impossible. Um, you don't get all of this ugly message if you don't have the debug flag. So just don't worry if it seems a Got little it. bit too much. You only yep. get this much. You have selected the same task twice. You can't bulk apply the same resource to the same task. That makes sense. And then suppose I were to do this and I were try if and I were to try to apply that to Ayana. Uh, that doesn't make sense either, right? You have selected a task that already has this resource applied. So a little bit of intelligence there. But if you do pick something that makes sense and you apply that to both of them. Yeah, I'm not sure. We say Andrew's share is being bulk assigned to what? To the two tasks. They really see this as being grouped by the tasks. So here in this oh. production. Oh, there's a certain sorting take, going on. Yeah, they're, they're, they're sorted by task. Yeah. So if I take this, for example, only Farah Kaufman cannot be on another one down here. It'll, it'll be an error because she is already on this task. So the way I see them doing this is I see them filtering on, on one of these things. Let's see if I can find one that has more than just one. There okay, and then selecting these, and then, okay, hey, these are Andrew's jobs. Oh, no, Andrew is already assigned to one of the other tasks in this, in this. so maybe we give this to Amanda. Okay, that works. Do you see, do you, do you see what I mean? That Amanda's being cool. assigned to those four tasks. Yeah. Got it, okay, so, so in this sub list, it's different than the, it's different than, the individual tasks that you have to go to and then assign people. This is one place to do all of the task assignments across all the task structure of the project. It's all Indeed. one place to do it. Indeed, I'm on the project record at the top. And so you, and by default, this is sorting by task ID. So they order these, they sort these. I see, okay. Pre-production, animation, pros, uh, whatever the next one is, post-production, production wrap. And so they go through this and at the bottom, they add, they, they can add a new one and they say, okay, this person, so yeah, so it is sorted and, and, and set up like that. Okay. And so how's the search work? Search is a quick search. Ben. I see. So you don't, you don't even really need the filters. You have that here. Got it. So you got another way. It's kind of searching and on resource right now. On resource and summary task and task and notes. It also oh. searches in notes. Oh, wow. World. Oh, wow. Okay. Got it. Very powerful. Okay, very nice, very fast. And then what's All happening with, fields, yeah. And what's happening with the st the static original budget, the area, the shaded area above that looks like a calculated area up, yeah, up top. Yeah, so these are sort of calculated summary fields that are sort of summing across the entire list of assignees for this project and doing some calculation, adding up, adding up original budget hours, adding up original budget dollars and things like that. Okay, got it. And is there anything right now, so, it's kind of a wide table. It, does it scroll left and right? Or is that just is something that we're doing, you can shape that? What do you mean? It doesn't look like, but it looks like on a screen that would be narrower, would everything fit? Well, the table 
the table looks like it's responsive. We'll there we go. We'll, we'll start to scroll. Yeah, got and it. Okay. The boxes will squeeze. At one point, it gets too small. It's too but small. If yeah. it's this small, mm -hmm. if you have less than seven hundred, then you're working on the phone. And okay. Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think this is powerful in showing what's possible here. So this is quite radically different from the native kind of way NetSuite does things.